What is the part of the brain that controls the sleep-wake cycle? The answer is the pineal gland. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 35-year-old female who presented to the emergency departments with headache. She was treated through multiple ER visits and was discharged with a diagnosis of migraine. After those headaches persisted, she came back to the emergency department where a physician ordered a CT scan. That CT scan showed a buildup of excess fluid on the brain called hydrocephalus. Therefore, an MRI of her brain was performed that showed this enhancing mass in the pineal gland. That mass deep in the center of her brain was obstructing the natural flow of fluid in the brain, causing a backup of fluid, which was causing her headaches. So let's talk about it. What is the pineal gland? It's a gland in our brain that secretes the hormone called melatonin, which controls our body's sleep-wake cycle. In other words, it controls our circadian rhythm. So what is the differential diagnosis of cysts or mass on the pineal gland? One of the most common things that we find on a pineal gland is something called a pineal cyst, which is a completely benign entity. It's just a buildup of fluid on the gland itself, and it usually is found incidentally or on imaging that was done for some other reason. They're commonly found in young adults and more commonly found in women than men. They're actually found in one to 5% of the population. If you're found to have a pineal cyst, it's usually recommended to undergo an MRI with contrast to rule out some type of pineal tumor. The differential diagnosis of pineal neoplasms are as above. You can have germ cell tumors, you can actually have metastatic disease to the pineal gland or primary tumors of the pineal gland. Germinoma is the most common type of pineal neoplasm, representing approximately 50% of the cases. Diagnosis of this type of tumor can be assisted with the CSF and serum markers. There are several oncoproteins that are excreted that can be drawn for. Now back to our patient. The diagnosis here really looked like what's called a pineal cytoma. That is a primary tumor of the pineal gland, and it is typically a grade one or a low grade tumor. There can be additional grades such as grade two, three, or four, and this is an example of a grade four pineal tumor, also known as a pineal blastoma. These are really aggressive tumors that need resection plus chemo and radiation. Now, surgery on the pineal gland is very risky because it is so deep in the brain. It does take a highly skilled neurosurgeon in order to perform surgery on the pineal gland. In our patient's case, we really felt like this was a pineal cytoma or a low-grade tumor. She's mostly symptomatic of the hydrocephalus because that tumor was obstructing the flow of fluid, causing a buildup of pressure on her brain. Therefore, we elected to treat her hydrocephalus and observe the tumor. Options to treat the hydrocephalus include endoscopic third ventriculostomy or ventricular peritoneal shunting. Both of those options are diverting the flow of spinal fluid and alleviating the pressure on the brain. Here is a picture that demonstrates normal spinal fluid flow and how an obstruction of the flow of fluid can cause a backup of pressure. I elected to perform a procedure called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy where we basically make a small incision on the patient's skull and place an endoscope into the floor of the third ventricle of the brain and basically make a diversion of fluid in front of the brainstem. Here is a video of an endoscopic third ventriculostomy where we visualize the hole that's been created in the floor of the third ventricle. You can see the pulsations of the spinal fluid as it exits through the hole that has been created, restoring the natural flow of fluid. That means that the flow of the fluid of the brain can be restored naturally and the patient would not need a shunt. That means no hardware. Now we can safely monitor this tumor for any growth over time and intervene if it's needed. She went home the day after surgery and has done great with the resolution of her headaches. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.